starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a San Antonio man is behind bars facing charges of child pornography. Just ahead, how police say they found the evidence. President Biden saying we could declare our independence from this virus on July 4th. I'm Alex Pache in Washington. Coming up, his plans to vaccinate the country. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are at 69 degrees right now. I saw a little bit of mist and drizzle on the way to work, but I guess we're going to expect real rain or more rain later on. And good morning to you. We made it to Friday. It is March 12th and yeah, there's quite a bit more moisture out there this morning. It's causing some problems on the roads in a notorious spot. We'll talk to Samuel in just a moment. That's right. But for now, let's go ahead and check in with Mike and he got the memo. About the blue you. memo. We all got the blue memo today. <laughs> hey, everybody looks fantastic. You were talking about uh, you know, the mist and all that. Did you see any actual showers? Not a full on shower. It drizzled on me the whole way in, though. So it's okay. been a, quite a bit more than we've seen the last couple of mornings. Because when I, I walked out the back door, and it's like, oh, wow, it's really damp out here. And then mm -hmm. driving in, it was actually a, a regular, you know, good old fashioned shower. It lasted about two seconds, but it was coming down a little bit better. And we do have a few scattered ones around the area over there. 10 at 410. As you can see, visibility is uh, pretty good. Roads are uh, just assume damp all around the area. We've had a few of these light showers that have been moving on through the area in the overnight hours. Uh, you know, nothing, no big deal. And some of it may be too light to be picked up on radar. So some of that mist out there, but you may run into an actual uh, shower. A little bit of fog out toward Rock Springs. Uh, visibility is at two miles. That may continue to drop off. Seven LaGrange Gonzalez. We've got hints of it around the area. Just kind of keep that in mind as you uh, head out this morning. And yeah, temperatures are almost identical to what they were yesterday. Uh, almost 20 degrees above normal right now, and it's going to be another warm day today. The allergens mold is on the moderate side. Uh, Hackberry mulberry are still on the, the low side, and still no oak is showing up. 77 at noon, 82 for a high temperature. Another breezy day. Again, plenty of clouds, maybe a peak or two of sunshine. And yeah, we get some uh, real rain coming in here late tomorrow night and early on Sunday. We'll talk about that, and I think we salvage the first day of daylight saving time in the afternoon. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King, you got problems out there, sir? Yes, we do, uh, Mike. This is at the uh, Fine Silver Curve uh, downtown. The 18 wheeler has uh, rolled over, and this tow truck has just uh, arrived on the scene while we were talking here as the show was starting. Uh, so hopefully that situation gets uh, cleared up. And we did see some traffic uh, moving by on this side uh, of the uh, of the high of, of the tow truck. So that so that's some good news. But again, a fine silver curve. It, you know, it's a, a notorious and especially in a morning uh, like this one where it, it really wasn't raining all that much, but the roads were damp when I was coming in, too. So and you can have uh, situations like this one this morning again, showing uh, you on the uh, maps here. Uh, also out here on the uh, west side, Loop 410, there is some uh, construction uh, southbound. So there is a, a closure here on the southbound lanes uh, between uh, the crossroads so a little further back all the way over to military. So that's something to watch out for. Again, here is the rollover at 35 to I-10. Uh, some delays in Bandera Road this morning, 11 minutes each way between 410 and 1604. And again, here's another look. Again, fine silver curve, uh, one, two, three, three lanes, four lanes closed uh, right now at the curve because of this 18-wheeler rollover. And we'll have another update on that coming up. A San Antonio man now facing child pornography charges after disturbing images and videos were found on his phone. 40-year Juan Guillermo Moreno was arrested yesterday. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown with more on this story. Stephen. Hey, good morning, Mark. Well, this all kicked off back in September of last year when Moreno asked his nephew's girlfriend and a second witness for a ride to a nearby salvage yard. Now, according to his arrest affidavit, it was after they dropped him off that they realized that Moreno had actually left his cell phone in the backseat of the truck that they were traveling in. And what they found was graphic content, which they immediately turned over to police. Now, that affidavit states that several pornographic images and videos depicting children were found on Moreno's cell phone. Now, while that content it's too graphic to share with our viewers on air. Some of the children, Mark and Stephanie, were as young as two. Back to you guys. Thank you, Stephen. And this latest news this morning on off duty Bear County deputy is on the other side of the law after the sheriff's office announced his termination papers have been issued. Eric Solora is facing an assault, bodily injury, family violence charge. According to BCSO, the 25 year old deputy has been employed with sheriff's office since March of 2017. 
The Public Integrity Unit will be doing a criminal investigation at the same time BCSO Internal Affairs Administrative Investigation is commenced. Details on the assault are unknown at this time. And now to an update on a story we first brought you here on GMSA. The woman who had a near-death experience when she was pinned between her stove and a pickup truck is now offering a reward for her missing puppy. Dorina Elizondo says she was in her kitchen preparing a meal when a truck came cat crashing through a wrought iron fence and straight through a brick wall into her kitchen. She says the Wednesday morning incident has left her in disbelief. I was yelling. I was terrified. I thought things were still falling. I mean, things were just falling everywhere from the roof and everything. Elizondo suffered a cracked rib and bruising, but she says she's not worried about herself. Her dog, Sammy, is now missing. And since the incident, she is asking the community's help in finding her eight-month-old puppy. If you've seen Sammy, you can notify the Elizondo family by calling 210-986-986. 9857. They are offering a cash reward. Latest COVID 19 numbers for Bear County. Metro Health reporting 366 new cases this morning. That brings the confirmed total to 1,000, uh, sorry, 199,431. There were also five new deaths, bringing the total here to 2,861. In our local hospitals, 240 people admitted, 104 to remain in ICU, and 63 of them are on ventilators. And here locally, Reverend James Robinson and Gospel Vision Ministries are hosting a community health fair tomorrow. That health fair will be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and it will be located next to Chapman's Chicken on 1747 Southwest WW White Road. People who attend the fair can get free COVID tests, speak directly to health experts and get a new supply of safety items like hand sanitizers, sanitizer, gloves and masks. It's just now 437. President Biden last night marked a somber moment one year since the coronavirus outbreak was declared a global pandemic. President Biden's first primetime address noting the toll this virus has taken on so many American families, but he also outlined his plan to defeat it. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest from Washington. Finding light in the darkness is a very American thing to do. In his first primetime address, President Joe Biden outlining his plan for a return to normal, directing states to make all American adults eligible for a vaccine by May 1st. The president telling Americans if they do their part by wearing masks, social distancing and getting vaccinated when possible, there's a chance that we can gather safely in small groups by July 4th. After this long, hard year, that will make this Independence Day something truly special where we not only mark our independence as a nation, but we begin to mark our independence from this virus. The White House announcing the military will have a total of 6,000 troops backing vaccination programs, and that the number of community health centers and pharmacies giving out vaccines will dramatically expand. People will have two new ways to schedule appointments, a federally supported website and an 800 number. The president's address coming exactly one year after the declaration of the global coronavirus pandemic. It also comes on the same day Biden signed one of the largest economic rescue packages in our nation's history. Well, this historic legislation is about rebuilding the backbone of this country and giving people in this nation, working people, middle class folks, uh, people who built the country a fighting chance. The new law will give most Americans $1,400 checks, extend unemployment benefits through early September at $300 a week, provide funding for vaccinations and testing, help for small businesses, and billions of dollars in housing assistance. Those checks could start hitting as soon as this weekend. It's Biden's first major legislative achievement, passing without a single Republican vote, even though a Pew poll shows that 70% of Americans support it. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. 439, 69 degrees. And just ahead on GMSA, a warning for art lovers who have been looking into Van Gogh immersive experiences. What the Better Business Bureau says you need to know before buying tickets there. Southwest 737 Max is back in the air. Up next, what we know about its restored operations. And taking a look outside with the live cam, a lot of slick roads out there, so probably some problems. We will check in with Samuel later on. 
And welcome back. It's 442. Boeing 737 MAX jets are back up in the air for Southwest Airlines. The planes returned to service yesterday with 44 daily flights to 15 U.S. destinations for now. But by mid-April, the company says the jet will resume operation throughout its network. The MAX was grounded nearly two years ago after two deadly crashes overseas. But the order was lifted last November after a major overhaul of the jet's software. Hey, the Better Business Bureau wants to warn art lovers about pop-up exhibits all over North America featuring Van Gogh. There are different experiences coming to various cities, and the names are similar, but some are actually just virtual reality headset encounters. Tickets are being sold for this event through VanGoNYC.com, Ticketmaster, Universe.com, and through a European-based business called Fever. And time now is 4.43 and 69 degrees for now. Still ahead, helping you find the perfect travel mug through science. Coming up next, Marilyn Moore shows us what's be best for your morning coffee. That's probably better than picking out something that looks pretty. Plus, the Grammy Awards are this Sunday, and The Weeknd, who was not nominated this year, says he will boycott the awards going forward. Details are next in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, boycotting the Grammys forever. After being shut out of this Sunday's Grammy Award nominations, The Weeknd is taking a stand, telling the New York Times, quote, I will no longer allow my label to submit my music to the Grammys. One of the things that has been very astonishing about all this is that three out of the last four Grammys have been racked by one scandal or another. For The Weeknd not to be nominated either points to corruption or severe dysfunction. How will the other artists respond to the growing Grammy backlash and can the Recording Academy recover? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. 447, whether you're a camping lover, if you just need a drink for your daily commute, insulated travel mugs come in handy. Yes, they do. And you might have already found the perfect cup for you, or maybe you have a cupboard full of rejects. Consumer Reports found there's a science to knowing what travel mug is best. 12 on your side's Marilyn Mort shows us which ones will keep your coffee hot the longest. The perfect travel mug. It's the commuter's quest. You want it to keep your hots hot, your colds cold, and be dribble proof. A travel mug seems like it would be a really simple thing, but a lot of people have a surprisingly tough time finding one that's perfect. So Consumer Reports tested insulated mugs from several brands, including Yeti, Thermos, Contigo, and Starbucks. First, they checked temperature retention, filling each with boiling water and opening them at intervals to take the temperature until it reached 140 degrees. They did the same for cold beverages, too. They also checked to see how easy they are to clean, whether you can open with one hand while driving, and whether they fit in a variety of cup holders. Best of the test, this 16 ounce Zoji Rushi. It kept liquid hot for more than 13 hours. It's easy to open, leak proof, fits most cup holders, and its lid comes apart so it's easier to clean. It's $28. For a little less money, this Thermos Stainless King keeps coffee hot for about seven hours, and it has a handy tea bag hook. If cleanup is key, testers found this 16 ounce Ello Campy for $18 is your best bet. Plus, it's leak proof. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I, f I found it. I found the jo Zoji Rushi on, um, on Amazon. It looks like the prices could run anywhere from $22 to $32, All right, but depending on the color. Is there one with sparkles on it, though? Uh, I'll keep looking for you. Okay. That's important. It is. Uh, Sam is here, and he just told us that there is another incident now working on San Antonio's freeways. Yes, and we'll get to that in just a moment, but wanted to give you an update first here at the uh, situation at uh, close to the uh, fine silver curve there, uh, 35 southbound the I-10 westbound. They're working on getting this 18-wheeler uh, upright and eventually moving. They are allowing some traffic to go by. We see some cars there, but uh, you can definitely uh, tell that they're going to be working on this for a little while longer this morning. And here's a look at that on the map again. Uh, so this is a 35 southbound. Here's 10 westbound, and that's kind of where uh, this situation uh, is right now. The new situation we were talking about, Mark, is the vehicle fire. This is I-10 eastbound at Foster Road. Understand there's also an 18 wheel involved in this incident, and you can see 
traffic on uh, both sides uh, of the interstate is uh, being affected by that. We do have a view of that also on TransGuide uh, from the distance. We'll get to that in a second, but here already your travel time, seven minutes between 410 and 1604, and that's continuing to build in here. You can kind of see that it's in the distance there. This is the view from I-10 East at uh, Loop 410, but you can see that collection of emergency vehicles there. So this is also a situation we'll keep an eye on throughout the morning. Thank you, Samuel. How's our Friday looking, Mike? Uh, just kind of damp this morning. Best way to uh, describe it. There was a lot of mist out there. Everything was kind of wet, and then we had a few uh, showers. Now, yesterday we had a, uh, a little bit of a sun, a little bit of sun kind of peeking on through. Um, I don't know if we'll see too much of that at all this morning. Maybe some later on this afternoon, but basically still overall cloudy skies today and you can see the road appears to be kind of damp over there at 10 at 410. Some of these light showers have been moving up through the area. There may be some mist out there that's too light to be picked up on radar, but but actually, I mean, it was a decent little shower when I was driving into work this morning. Wipers had to go and then, you know, it lasted for just a couple of minutes. That was about it. And this is going to be the situation throughout the rest of the morning and then later on this afternoon and basically just cloudy skies. Then we'll do it all over again tomorrow morning. Probably a little bit better chance. I mean, not great, but a little bit better chance for a few more of these showers around tomorrow morning. And by late in the afternoon, we'll start to see a few of those trying to develop out there to the west and then that area of rain is going to work its way across the area into Sunday morning and even a couple of thunderstorms and there you can see right along that front that moves on through and then by late in the afternoon on Sunday things are going to be clearing out quite nicely as a matter of fact probably in the hill country by uh, late morning you may start to see things starting to clear on out of here and I think here in town actually by noon or even early afternoon there's also a very small chance and it's way out to the west that uh, this would be overnight some of those storms could be on the potentially uh, severe side and high winds and some hail and that it's just a marginal risk but that's out there almost into Kerrville Rock Springs over toward Del Rio and again that's late tomorrow night so forecast today though we got some showers around this morning and then most of the cloudy skies on the breezy side again that's i mean seems like every day this week has been cloudy and breezy 82 for a high temperature and then tonight we are going to have or early tomorrow morning i should say a couple of more of these showers around here and then especially going into tomorrow night and then overnight into sunday that's when we're going to have some uh, pretty good thunderstorms some showers and thunderstorms those will clear on out of here it is going to be windy on sunday temperatures the humidity is going to be dropping off that 74 is going to feel very nice down to 48 then monday morning of course before you go to bed Saturday night, make sure you set the, uh, the clocks ahead and then it's back up into the low 80s on Tuesday. Any little return of humidity is then going to go away. Another front moves on through here. Another couple of showers by about midweek. But uh, again, tomorrow night, that's the best chance for some rain around here. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. We do need the rain. 452 on your Friday morning. And a new docuseries is looking into the allegations that Woody Allen molested his daughter. After the break, what one of the directors is saying to Allen. In your morning spotlight, Woody Allen is getting a shocking documentary, plus finding out what Jennifer Garner is doing these days. For the latest on what is happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. This is the story of two of the biggest stars in the world. The explosive documentary series Alan V. Farrow wraps up this weekend, looking into the allegations that Woody Allen molested his daughter Dylan in the 90s. Allen has long denied the claims, and co-director Amy Ziering tells me they asked him to be in the doc, but he didn't respond. And the offer's still on the table. I'm sure HBO would be happy to do a fifth episode, a sixth episode. We are more than happy to hear from him. The finale of Alan V. Farrow airs Sunday night on HBO. It's yes. What does Jennifer Garner do on Yes Day with her kids? She stars in the new Netflix film, Yes Day, which is all about saying yes to almost everything your kids want to do for 24 hours. In the movie, the kids go crazy, but Garner tells me that in real life, it was actually pretty tame. My kids wanted to, while the car was parked, sit in the front seat and play with the knobs and put their head out of the sunroof. It was little things like that. Go to the gas station and buy junk food and lottery tickets. Just be in control. And of course, there was ice cream for breakfast, but she did say no to getting a dog. Yes Day is out today on Netflix. They're busy in Los Angeles setting up for the Grammys this weekend. The Daily Show's Trevor Noah hosting Music's Biggest Night. Motherland, Motherland, drip on me. Beyonce leads all nominees with nine nods. Harry Styles will open the show and we'll see live performances from DaBaby, Taylor Swift, Megan Thee Stallion, and more Sunday night on CBS. The time has come to say.
And James Taylor knows a thing or two about the Grammys. He has five. And today, he turned 73. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 457 and 69 degrees for now. Still ahead in our next half hour, recognizing a man who has decades of service. Stephen will join us once again and introduce us to this 93-year-old deputy. Plus the latest when coming to gatherings with friends and family this summer, what President Joe Biden is hoping for and what medical experts have to say about it. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA at 5, a new COVID-19 waiting list for people in Kamal County. More on who qualifies and how to sign up just ahead. Wettest morning of the week so far in many spots, and it's caused one big traffic trouble spot. We'll check in with our traffic expert, Samuel King, coming up. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It's March 12th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And when I drove in, it was just kind of a little sprinkle here, sprinkle there, but some people saw showers this morning. Yeah, it's it's kind of different shades of precipitation. You, I had fairly steady drizzle. Mike saw some showers, yeah. downright showers coming. Yeah, actual decent showers. Wipers were going on the car. So anyway, hey, quick, uh, he's not watching from here, he lives in California. I'm a happy birthday to my brother. Oh, happy so, birthday. Yes, he is all of getting old. 68 degrees. 68 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> that, Whoa, that that's old. 68 <laughs> years. That is, is the kind of faux pas weatherman man. Uh, yes, yeah. Because it's 69 degrees, he's 68. So anyway, dew point is 66 years. Uh, and the humidity is at 90% as of right now. <laughs> really, Mike? Anyway, uh, yeah, we do have some showers out there. Uh, temperatures today are going to be uh, like what they've been the past couple of days. Yesterday, we only stayed, only could creep up to the upper 70s. I think we'll still be looking at the low 80s later on today, about uh, 10 degrees below. Excuse, uh, see, wow, what's with me? 10 degrees above normal, and it is Friday. And then as far as the aquifer yesterday, no change. Hopefully I can get that one right. And, and I'm just reading this stuff right off the screen right there, and I still can't get it right. Molds on the moderate side, Hackberry and Mulberry are both low. As far as rain, yeah, there's a lot of mist, drizzle, and some of those uh, just regular old showers. You can see everything was sliding from uh, basically south to north. North and still got a couple of these showers there on the uh, northwest side. If you're going out 10, you can run into some of that uh, just regular old kind of shower. But if you do get one of these, it's not going to last long at all. And this is more, uh, nothing more really than kind of some uh, nuisance rain out there. But the better rain is still in the forecast for late tomorrow night and then also going into Sunday morning. Visibility pretty good around the metropolitan area. A uh, little bit of reduced visibility here and there. And the uh, thickest, if there is any fog, is going to be out there in Rock Springs at just a two miles visibility. So this morning, a couple of showers, very warm, very humid. Again, 10 degrees above normal and mostly cloudy 80s later on this afternoon. Uh, breezy conditions once again, then a few light showers in the morning. Mostly cloudy skies. A couple of showers going to then start to develop out to the west late in the afternoon. Then tomorrow night, overnight into early Sunday, we get those uh, thunderstorms clearing out by probably starting late morning, early afternoon, clearing from west to east. It's going to be windy, much drier air comes in here, so we're going to be salvaging latter portion of the day on Sunday. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King, big problems out there, right, sir? Yes, Mike, that uh, wet weather causing uh, some issues, we believe, including uh, this 18-wheeler rollover. This is at uh, uh, the fine silver curve there, 35 southbound I-10 westbound. If it's not right at the curve, it's very close, and you can see uh, that the uh, a tow truck has arrived, but the 18 wheeler is still there on its side. Some traffic getting through here now, so that's a, a good thing. Uh, but again, watch out for this. If you're in this area, that's going to slow you down a little bit. Here's a look at that on the maps here, and you can see that delay uh, heading westbound on I-10 this morning. Hopefully that gets cleared up fairly soon. We also looking at the a wider array here. We have an accident now on 90 and Zarza Moore. We'll have more on that coming up, and we also have a, this situation now out uh, in eastern Bear County, I-10 at Foster Road. Understand there is an 18-wheeler on fire there earlier. And our Katrina Weber, she's live at this scene right now. And Katrina, how do things look out there? How is this impacting the interstate? Well, in a word, it's a mess out here, both directions uh, that are impacted by this accident. There appears to be an 18-wheeler that had caught fire earlier. It looks like it's in uh, maybe in the construction zone here between the two sides of the highway. Uh, we can see a uh, part of the trailer in the middle there where uh, police and firefighters are working. And then there appears to be the, tr the uh, cab of that truck that is burned up 
it's a, a melted mess, really. But what we're seeing here, uh, and we, we don't have any details on the accident because we have not been able to get over there to police to find out exactly how this happened. But again, it looks like maybe it got into that construction zone somehow. Now, while we, uh, at, right after we arrived, there was a secondary accident involving that silver vehicle you see there. We uh, heard them call for paramedics, but we don't know the extent of anyone's injuries, if anyone is injured. Uh, what I can tell you is that this has created a mess. The eastbound lanes of I-10 are shut down. All the traffic is falling off onto the access road or being guided off onto the access road here near Foster Road. Uh, the westbound side also appears to be affected. We saw some cars at a standstill uh, just ahead of this accident, and then it looks like they also are using the access road. So quite a mess out here. Uh, if you don't have to be out here, definitely find another way around. No word on when the situation is gonna clear up. What we heard on the scanner is that that 18 wheeler did have a load of rebar on it and that load spilled out onto the highway. So it sounds like they're going to have a cleanup uh, to do as well before this highway can open up again. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. You guys stay safe out there. San Antonio police are on the search for a shooter after a man was found dead inside a car with a gunshot wound to the chest. Police responded to the scene just after 6 p.m. on South San Augustine. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. An SAPD captain says details on exactly what happened are somewhat limited. There was no witnesses to the shooting itself, just some people that were in the block that heard the shooting take place. The man has not been identified. Police don't believe it was a drive-by shooting, but some sort of ongoing dispute between the man and the suspect. And we have an update involving a Miss Lee Toller and his mother. Police have released surveillance video of them before they disappeared. So take a look at the video showing 20-year-old Delaney Chaidez and her 18-month-old son, James Chaidez. They were last seen on January 4th at a store in the 7100 block of Marbuck Road. Anyone with information is urged to call the SAPD Special Victims Unit at the number on your screen. That is 210-207-4093. In your coronavirus headlines, Comal County is starting a standby list for seniors wanting to get the COVID vaccine. All seniors in Comal County are urged to sign up. The move comes as state eligibility for vaccine will add those 50 years or older. As part of phase 1C, public health officials say there are 16,300 residents that have been vaccinated so far. And we have a link to sign up for Comal County on our website at ksat.com. First official day of spring is a little more than a week away, but President Joe Biden is already eyeing some summer fun. He says Americans might be able to gather in small groups by then. As CNN's Brett Conway reports, health experts, including his own, are quick to throw in some caveats. Could we have independence from most COVID-19 restrictions this summer? By July the 4th, there's a good chance you, your families and friends, We'll be able to get together and have a cookout and a barbecue. But don't send out those invites just yet. President Joe Biden and his team say we can't have our fun this summer if we don't follow health guidelines this spring. He also says all adults should be eligible for a vaccine by May, and Americans need to roll up those sleeves. We are in a race against the variants. Even still, some areas are easing restrictions. Maryland is opening restaurants and stores to full capacity today. And next week, Los Angeles will open gyms and movie theaters. Researchers at the University of Washington forecast almost 600,000 deaths by July if behaviors stay the same. Dr. Anthony Fauci says new cases are rolling in at some 60,000 a day. That is unacceptably high. That is risky for triggering another surge. Another concern moving forward is the long-term health problems COVID survivors might face. Just one more reason. We need everyone to get vaccinated. We need everyone to keep washing their hands, stay socially distanced, and keep wearing the mask. Otherwise, we can put away our beach towels and expect new restrictions. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Back here at home, a life devoted to serving. Reserve Deputy Sergeant Arthur Calk with the Precinct 4 Bear County Constable's Office has spent over 70 years in law enforcement, but now he says he's finally ready to retire. Our Stephen Cavazos is live and tells us about his journey. Good morning, Stephen. 
Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, at the age of 94, Reserve Deputy Col Sergeant Kulk, that is, is the second oldest peace officer in the state of Texas. But he would tell you that his commitment to serving his community is just something that he was born to do. Now, Kulk's call to protect started at an early age, uh, very early on. He tells us he proudly served his country during World War II. And in 1947, that's when he began his career in law enforcement with the Precinct 4 Bear County Constable's Office. Now, it was during that time, Falk tackled evictions, traffic patrol issuing warrants and other notices. Now, over the years, he served under different constables. Here's what he told us about his life in law enforcement. It's just the way I am. I have to be busy. I can't just sit and do nothing. Very straightforward, and currently he serves under Constable Catherine Brown, who stepped into the role at the start of this year. In a post on her Facebook page, she calls Kalk a pillar in the Bear County law enforcement community, and his experience is unparalleled. Now, although Kalk has seen this community change and grow over the years, he is proudly going to be hanging up his hat for retirement in the coming days. And coming up later this morning on GMSA, he shares more about his experience in law enforcement. Mark Stephanie. All right, thank you, Stephen. Time now is 511 and 70 degrees for now. Still ahead, Bumble helping break the ice. A look at the dating app's new night in feature for those who are going on virtual dates. And helping birds who have been impacted by the winter storm last month. Our Sarah Costa was playing. That's next on GMSA. But first, outside with live cam, outside by the airport. Full forecast for your weekend coming up. You know, you're not going to see a blooming plant for this county or the next county or the next county over. We've seen the aftermath that winter storm Yuri did to South Texas plants. And even though most plants will eventually come back, bird biologist Jeff Brown, who lives in Corpus Christi, says he is concerned that local and migrating birds and hummingbirds flying through Texas this month will not have enough food. All the lantanas, all, all the hummingbird type plants, I have trumpet vine and clay macanthus and all these great little plants that feed the hummingbirds around these houses that I help to maintain. And all of them are having to be cut to the ground. South Texas is a hot spot for bird migration, especially the Rio Grande Valley and Corpus Christi. But those migrating birds and hummingbirds also stop in San Antonio and other parts of Texas as well. If you were traveling from the valley to Dallas, you're going to need a spot to clean a uh, place to gas up. You're going to need a store to go and get something to eat or gasoline. And so same things with these little hummingbirds and the migrating birds. They need some place to gas up and uh, there's no flowers to be found. Brown says this impact is important. Even if you aren't a bird or nature enthusiast, irregularity to the bird food supply can have a domino effect on our local ecosystems to our local economy. For example, Brown says the birding industry is a multi-million dollar industry where people from across the globe travel to South Texas during the migration seasons. They flock down here to be able to see the birds that we have to offer here in Texas. So it is for the industry, it is for businesses, it is for the restaurants and the hotel business. So caring about nature, you're caring about jobs. But you can do your part by putting out a bird feeder this month and a hummingbird feeder. Now Brown says if you put out a hummingbird feeder, make sure you clean it every two to three days. You can either buy that nectar at a store or you can make it on your own with four cups of water, one cup of sugar, and he says if you make it at home, do not include dye. It's, it's anything anybody can do, you as the public, uh, you know, little steps, but if everyone does a little, it's going to help a lot. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. 516, about 70 degrees. And still ahead, a Texas actor and UT professor is considering running for governor. Why Matthew McConaughey says he wants to take on the role. Up next, Netflix cracking down on password sharing in separate homes. Details on changes you can expect to see soon. Many plugins are stuck in the past. They release a lot of scent at first, but after a while, you barely know they're working. New Febreze Fade Defy Plug works differently. It's the first plugin with built in technology to digitally control how much scent is released to smell first day fresh for 50 days. It even tells you when it's ready to be refilled. Upgrade to Febreze Fade Defy Plug. Febreze, la 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 la. Almost spilled, the almost milk. Chobani oat tastes like milk without the dairy. Mm. 
your Barney flip. All good, no bad. In today's Tech Bytes, Netflix cracks down on password sharing. Some users are being blocked at the login screen and being told that they need to be in the same household as the account owner. Netflix says the new security measure is only being tested on some users right now. Google Maps is making it easier for you to report new and missing roads. Instead of just dropping a pin, users can now draw the changes directly onto the map, whether it's renaming a street or changing the direction of traffic. Google will vet all submissions before they are published. And the dating app Bumble is offering a new feature called Night In, aimed at breaking the ice on virtual dates. It allows users to play games. For now, those games are limited to trivia questions, but Bumble hopes to add some other games soon. Maybe Uno, some Monopoly. Those are brand recommendations. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Did you see those texts? Scorpio, huh? Guilty as charged. <laughs> Whew, they've well, got a future. They, they have to keep it under control <laughs> I, right now. I know, breaking the ice. Yeah. Hey, real quick, let's get an update on that situation out there here in the downtown area or near downtown. Samuel? Yes, uh, this is uh, close to the uh, Fine Silver Curve area. They're still trying to get this 18-wheeler upright. <laughs> Uh, some traffic uh, getting through there somehow, uh, but you can see all the uh, uh, vehicles there. Uh, also have this situation out uh, east of 410, uh, I-10 eastbound closed at Foster Road. Uh, there's an 18-wheeler fire, and Katrina was telling us there was a separate uh, accident there, so uh, watch out for that the, uh, this morning as well. We have one more crash now. This is at 90 at Zarzamora, and you can see traffic uh, continuing to build there. So quite the uh, busy morning on a Friday, Mike. Yeah, and a lot of uh, these incidents may be due to the fact that the roads are kind of damp out there. So uh, over there at 10 at 410 at the interchange, you can see a little bit of a sheen off the uh, the highway. Traffic there is moving along fairly well, and we've had a few of these scattered showers. I uh, actually ran into a back real shower coming into work this morning. Lasted about a, a minute, if that, and everything is sliding up to the north. So very light. Uh, there's nothing showing up on radar further on down to the south, but there may also be a little bit of mist out there. It's very, very damp. As a matter of fact, the humidity due point temperatures are even higher than what they were yesterday morning. Yesterday we were about uh, what 62, 63. Now everybody's well up into the mid and upper 60s. That is definitely on the muggy side. Look at that 68 right now at Randolph. Humidity is going to be sticking around today as well as tomorrow. At least it's getting squeezed out in the form of a little bit of rain. Obviously nothing too substantial to help out, but uh, we will see more rain than tomorrow night as the front moves on through. And this is the drier air then that's going to be coming on in here later on in the day on Sunday. And as far as uh, dew points, then we drop off Sunday into Monday. So it's going to be pleasant Sunday afternoon. Quick return of humidity, and then that drops off again with another front that's going to move through here. Then uh, later on, looks like late Tuesday, Wednesday. So scattered showers this morning, uh, then cloudy skies, scattered showers tomorrow morning. Then tomorrow night, we see the rain starting to develop out there to the west, working its way across the area in the early morning hours on Sunday. We've got early church service Sunday. You may need an umbrella with that. But then by late morning and noonish. Still some rain off to the east, but we'll start to clear out off to the uh, the west. And rain will come to an end, and we'll see some sunshine to finish up the day on Sunday with much lower humidity. 77 today at noon, mostly cloudy, still breezy. These few showers around this morning, and maybe a patch of fog out in portions of the hill country. 82 for a high temperature, about 10 above normal tomorrow. Almost a repeat of today, maybe temperatures down a little bit as we go into the afternoon hours, 78 there. And as you can see, 55 starting off Sunday and then down to 48 again on Monday. So much drier air Sunday, but uh, some of those thunderstorms come in here overnight into Sunday morning. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. About 524. And a movie about a girl who seems able to perform miracles after a supposed visitation from the Virgin Mary is in the works. We're going to have a sneak peek of the new trailer that's coming up next. I love responsibility. I have ambition. Does that ambition include politics? Matthew McConaughey is talking about running for governor of Texas. The actor and native Texan called it a true consideration on a Houston podcast recently, saying, what is my leadership role? I have some things to teach and share. And what is my role? What's my category in my next chapter of life? Hi, I'm Mickey. Hi. Sebastian Stan and Denise Goff are Americans who have a whirlwind weekend in Greece, then have to decide what to do on Monday. Go back to their separate lives or see whether one passionate weekend can evolve into a real relationship. 
Monday opens in theaters and on VOD April 16th. When God builds a church, the devil builds a chapel next door. Today's other new trailer is The Unholy, about a girl who seems able to perform miracles after a supposed visitation from the Virgin Mary. But are heavenly forces at work or something more sinister? See for yourself when The Unholy debuts in theaters on April 2nd, which just happens to be Good Friday. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Wow. I know. Time now, 528 and 69 degrees for now. Just ahead in the next half hour, a juror in the George Floyd trial says he has a very negative impression of former officer Derek Chauvin. Why attorneys still allowed him to be a part of the jury. Plus, all Spurs fans will finally be able to set foot inside the AT&T Center for the first time since the pandemic started a year ago. Details on how many fans will be allowed in for tonight's game. San Antonio superintendents telling students and parents not to expect things to ever go back to normal. What they have to say about the future of virtual learning. Hi, good morning. It's Friday. Yay, it's Friday, March 12th. If you're just now waking up, it's a little bit wetter out there here in San Antonio this morning. Let's get an update on our rain chances for today and the better part of the weekend. Yeah, a good portion of the weekend, especially going into Sunday morning. We're going to have some showers around here, but we salvage a nice chunk of the afternoon on Sunday. More on that in just a couple of minutes. First of all, boy, the humidity is even higher this morning than what it was yesterday. There's a lot of mist out there as well as just some good old fashioned showers. Dew points are well up into the mid 60s. That means you know notice it when you step outside. Temperature right now is at 69 degrees, almost 20 above normal. And there's the uh, few showers that we have had. Notice how things are kind of tapering off, but we'll still have a few more of these showers uh, throughout the rest of the morning. And then, of course, what's too light to be picked up on radar, some of that mist out there. So most everything is uh, kind of on the damp side. There's a hint of uh, some reduced visibility, a hint of fog going up I-10 and toward Bernie Stage, Kerrville, and then out there toward Rock Springs. It's not a big, big deal, but just uh, kind of watch it if you maybe turn a corner and run into a little patch of fog. Molds on the moderate side, Hackberry, Mulberry are all low and uh, throughout the rest of today, 77 at noon and 82 for high temperature later on. So once again, 10 above normal, about the same situation tomorrow. Then we've got that front moving through. That gives us a better chance of rain. That brings in uh, some drier air for Sunday. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King and boy, it has been a mess out there. Quite a mess out there. Want to give folks some travel times before we get going here. 34 minutes coming in from Seguin on I-10 into downtown San Antonio. We'll get to more on that in a moment. 26 minutes from New Braunfels, 20 minutes on 90 from uh, Castroville. We have a situation 90 very close to 35. This is the view from 90 and Zarza Moore. A very slow traffic after a crash there. And this is how that looks on the map down to 30 miles per hour approaching I-35. So watch out for that. Looking at the maps, a lot of incidents across the area. Let's go downtown here. We've been talking about this situation uh, near or at the fine silver curve, uh, 35 southbound to I 10 westbound, some slowdowns there. Also, on the north side, close to 16, 1604, close to 281, there is a crash. And we also have uh, this situation out east. This is I. 10 eastbound at Foster Road. You see the interstate's closed here. No uh, data there. Only the frontage roads are going. We had some sort of vehicle fire involving an 18 wheeler uh, or Katrina Weber. She's live at the scene right now. And Katrina, has anything changed out there since the last time we spoke with you? I wish I had better news to report, but the things are still a mess out here. Same traffic backups on both sides and the same crash in the middle of it all. Uh, we did the one thing you'll notice is there are a few fi fewer fire trucks than there were last time. Uh, we had a hazmat unit out here cleaning up the fuel that had spilled from the gas tank. There's an 18 wheeler there in the middle of things that burned this morning around 415. Now the driver of that 18 wheeler just uh, came across the access road. I had a chance to talk to him real quick before he caught his right out of here. He says that he could not see in the dark. He ended up in a construction zone and that's where his truck got into trouble. And while we were out here, when we first got here, we noticed a secondary vehicle that then came along and also crashed. Don't know about any injuries in that situation, but the driver of this burn big rig is fine. He says he's okay. The only problem is he, he lost his load as well as his truck. What we heard on the scanner is that the truck was loaded with rebar and that it did spill across the highway. 
Haven't seen any cleanup in that area. And again, uh, affecting traffic in both directions, traffic being diverted onto the access roads. And uh, some is still stuck behind this, this wreck right now on the main lanes. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Just over a year ago, San Antonio school children began their 2020 spring break vacation, only it ended in a way no one expected. Well, now school superintendents are warning not to expect schools to ever return to what they once were, as the world of learning, they say, is changed forever. Ursula Perry reports. The 2020 school yearbook might look on the cover like any other, but turn the page and you'll find it filled with years worth of childhood angst and widespread anxiety. Did I know it was going to impact our schools? Absolutely. Um, did I know it was going to shut schools uh, in the way that it did? Absolutely not. I don't think anybody could predict that. The kids who initially cheered that school was interrupted soon learned virtual classrooms are not for everyone. But I just look at the incredible learning loss that we saw in March, April and May last year uh, and think about how long it's going to take us and the amount of resources it's going to take us to ameliorate that, to fix that. Um, and it, it's it's. My, in my mind, something I wish we had not done. Superintendents in San Antonio voice similar sentiments. If they knew then what they know now, 2020's classrooms would not have shut down. Parents were left at home watching grades go down and depression go sky high. We have advisory groups made up of parents and they share with us how their children are depressed. They're feeling isolated. Going forward, there are issues that are still not resolved. Six billion dollars of special COVID relief funding has not been dispersed by the state to the schools. And there's widespread star test confusion with different rules and accountability for grades three through eight, virtual students and class taught kids. The good news is that school testing and vaccinations are rising daily as community COVID cases decline. The superintendents want the kids back in class. It's just ironic that people are willing to open up restaurants and bars and other other businesses, which are very important in our community. Nobody wants them open than I do, but yet there's still this hesitation about having schools open. One of the biggest challenges we've had is convincing uh, families that uh, that the building is the best place for them to be, frankly, that that they really need to be in, the, in most cases uh, in the building. And that's a struggle that goes on to this day. Going forward, the school superintendents all agree that virtual learning is here to stay, but exactly what that'll look like remains unclear. They plan to roll out their plans for fall of 2021 by the end of this semester. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Ursula Perry. In your morning headlines, a man who said he has a very negative impression of Derek Chauvin became the sixth juror in the George Floyd trial. The man told attorneys that he could set that view aside and consider the evidence in the case. He was the only juror chosen in a day most notable for the judge restoring a third degree murder charge against Chauvin. When jury selection resumes today, the panel seat is so far will include five men and one woman. Mayor of Portland, Oregon announced he would seek $2 million in one-time funding for police, other agencies, and outreach programs to try to stem rampant gun violence in that city. The move represents an about-face after Portland leaders in June voted to cut nearly $16 million from their police department's budget. Reductions included the elimination of a gun violence reduction unit. Cuts came amid racial justice protests following the police killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Portland, Oregon has seen a spike in violence so far this year. There have been 20 homicides, most the result of shootings. And time now is 539 and 69 degrees for now. They say variety is the spice of life and Kit Kat candy bars continue to live by that axiom. The story coming up. I don't know about that and everything you need to know about the first in-person Spurs game since the pandemic started. Our RJ Marcus has all the details next. Boy, that sounds good saying it out loud, doesn't it? Yes, that does. Not the Kit Kat. Right. <laughs> More on that coming up outside with live cam. Might need that umbrella today and a, a much better chance, Mike says, of some rain as we get into the middle to latter part of the weekend. Details to come. Five forty-two. Welcome back. It's game day for our Spurs, and for the first time in a solid year, fans will finally be allowed inside the AT&T Center. RJ Marcus tells us what fans need to know before heading out to tonight's game. 
The Spurs have several things planned for fans tonight as they return to the arena for the first time since the pandemic started. The last time fans were in the house was March 10th of last year, so the Spurs wanted to host a welcome back party with safety in mind, of course. The Spurs are limiting capacity to 3,200 fans and there will be social distancing measures in place and fans are required to wear a mask except when they are eating or drinking. Here's some of the fun stuff taking place tonight. First of all, it will be an official fiesta night, so the court will be fiesta themed and the team is wearing their fiesta uniforms. Guests at the game will also be given two Spurs family fiesta shirts for you and a friend or family member. And pop singer Ellie Brooke, who is a San Antonio native, will sing the national anthem. The Coyote will be in the house doing his Coyote craziness and the Spurs hype squad will hand out gifts to random fans. Now before you head out, make sure to complete a mobile health screening using the Clear app, which is free to download. Temperatures will also be checked at the door. And remember, everything is cashless now, so download the Spurs app and you can use that to pay for parking, to make food and drink purchases, and you can go pick up that food or drink when it's ready to go, so no waiting in line. KSAT Sports Director Greg Simmons got a sneak peek of the new safety changes at the AT&T Center. Check out that video and more information for fans on KSAT.com. Have fun and be safe out there as the Spurs make a run for the playoffs with fans in the stands. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Go Spurs, go. And I know the players are so excited about having people in there. And the fans are excited to be there for them as well. It's going to be a good night. 543, 69 degrees. And if you felt like looking through the IKEA catalog was too much of a chore or you just want something to relax to, IKEA has you covered now. After the break, details about its new four hour long podcast. And welcome back. It's 546. Topping your morning consumer news, the IKEA catalog has now been transformed into a four hour long podcast. IKEA announced last year it would be discontinuing its bulky print catalog, which it has been sending out for 70 years. They say the new audio version is also something soothing for homebound people to listen to. IKEA's online sales got a big boost during the pandemic, up 45% as people turned their homes into makeshift schools and offices. That jump was enough to convince IKEA to make the marketing shift towards online browsing and shopping with its first mobile app. I'm just looking forward to four hours of people trying to pronounce all those Swedish names oh, of yeah. throw pillows and <laughs> that furniture. Would be, that would be interesting. Hey, TikTok is working to prevent bullying and harassment on the app. It's introducing two new features. One gives creators more control over the comments on their videos and the filter all comments feature allows creators to approve comments and decide which ones will appear on their videos. The other new feature prompts users to reconsider posting comments that are considered unkind or inappropriate. KitKat is continuing its creative seasonal releases with a key lime pie flavored candy bar. So instead of milk chocolate, this one will feature key lime pie flavored cream. It's coming out nationally in the spring for a limited time and they'll sell for around a dollar and nine cents. I mean, it's pretty, but I, I'm a chocolate fan, so I'm like, eh. Not sure. Mike's kind of scrunching his face. Samuel King, what do you think about that? Are you a Kit Kat fan, and would you try the key lime version? I will try the key lime version. Okay. I like key lime flavor. So well, I you I'll try it and report back to you. Thank Let you. Let us know. <laughs> so I'll spice and roll with it. Yes. <laughs> well, we do still have a couple of uh, situations out there, that, including here uh, downtown, uh, closer to Feinsilver Curve there, that 18 wheeler still on its side. The good news is there is some traffic uh, now getting by, more traffic getting by now, but you can still see they're uh, having a time figuring out how to get uh, this thing upright and then clear uh, in time for some of the later in the morning commute when traffic kind of builds a little bit. Uh, other good news is the crash appeared 1604 and 281. The crash on 90 and Zarzamora both have been cleared, but we still have the situation out here uh, that Katrina Weber has been telling you about. The closure of I-10 eastbound at Foster Road uh, it's, and it's causing a slowdown on the westbound lanes here too as we look at our travel time tool here. Uh, seven minutes between 1604 and 410. Don't really think about the eastbound one there because it's kind of off because of that closure there. But again, uh, something to look out for and uh, Katrina will have another update in the next hour, guys. Very thank, good. Thank, thank you. you, Samuel. Michael, what do you have on tap? Kit Kat, Key Lime Pie. Keep them separated. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't well, know. Well, there, there's some fans of not chocolates that they might right. they might like it but i don't know I, well if you could like come up with a seasonal kit kat what would be a top of your list you know oh gosh i don't know i'm shocked <laughs> he didn't say creme brulee <laughs> creme brulee 
I don't know. Anyway, all right, we'll think about that one. Uh, sun behind the clouds most of the day, most of the week. That's been the situation. We really haven't changed all that much. This weather pattern has been very stubborn this week. At least it's going to come to an end, and we're going to get some rain out of it, some decent rain. We've had a couple of showers this morning. Nothing is showing up in this picture as of right now. Um, we've got a few of them out there. As you can see, if you're going out I-10, you may run into a few of those showers uh, going east as well as going up into uh, parts of the hill country. We had a couple of them moving through town, and just because nothing is showing up on this picture doesn't mean there's not it's not wet out there. There may be a little bit of mist. There were some just kind of hanging in the air and then ran into a couple of showers coming into work this morning and we'll have a few of these showers around this morning and then by noon by later on this afternoon basically just cloudy skies. The sun's going to try and squeeze through at times. A few more showers around tomorrow morning about the same situation. Maybe a slightly better chance for some of those uh, showers tomorrow morning. Then we go into tomorrow night. That's when this front's going to move on through here, and that's when we'll start to see late, maybe even late in the uh, late, late afternoon, early evening, but uh, some of the rain's going to start to develop and then continue to work its way across the area, going into the wee hours of Sunday morning, and just as about the time the sun is trying to uh, come up on Sunday morning, and then that's going to be moving on out by probably mid to late morning. We'll still have a couple of showers left over, but by noon and even early afternoon, much of the rain is going to be off to the east and then clearing on out by late in the day on Sunday. Now, as uh, things get going tomorrow night, there is a very small chance, the marginal risk, that some of those storms could be on the strong to severe side with high winds and hail being the biggest threats out, and that's going to be northwest portions of the hill country. Very small chance, however. Got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning, obviously. The culprit for our weather pattern all week long, basically, is that big low, as you can see, is just spinning out there, centered right around Las Vegas as of right now, and it's going to continue to work its way in our direction, but that will eventually pull that front on through here. That's the same one early in the week that was parked up there right around the, the Gulf of Alaska, and it's been taking its sweet time moving. 77 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. Breezy today, again, kind of the same situation as the past few days. And then later on this afternoon, plenty of clouds, 82 for high temperature. Tomorrow morning, we'll have some more rain around here. And basically just cloudy skies may hold temperatures down a couple of notches still on the above normal side. Then we get the storms tomorrow night, early Sunday morning, and things will be clearing out. It's going to be windy on Sunday. Much drier air comes in here, much more pleasant in the afternoon on Sunday. And then look at that Monday down to 48 degrees, actually a little bit below normal Monday morning and slight jump in the humidity by midweek. Another chance for a shower and then we get rid of the humidity again. Yeah, 48 is going to feel chilly, very yeah, chilly. Especially after this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so mild. And Sunday afternoon is going to look nice. It's going to be a whole different story than what we've had all week long. Okay. Sunday afternoon, we deserve that after the time change, right? True. Yes. Thanks, Mike. 552, about 69 degrees. A new streaming service offers a library of classic and current music films and documentaries. Up next, CNN's Rick Damagella turns up the volume on the Coda collection. Your pick three numbers, 944, Fireball 0, Daily 4, 4167, Fireball 6. Cash 5, we have 4, 7, 24, 26, 34, Texas 2 Step, 3, 8, 9, 28, bonus ball 18. such a large gathering of people with music, it shows that music must mean something. Jimi Hendrix plays in a dozen documentary and performance films featured in The Coda Collection. The new streaming service exists in large part thanks to Hendrix. It really goes back to some of our founders in Jamie Hendrix and John McDermott and the Hendrix family at, a, at its core in how to be able to deliver audiovisual assets in a way that really represents sort of the musical experience in that moment in time. But the Coda collection is more than classic rock. I think what's really exciting about this is that it is era agnostic and genre agnostic. Like we're just fans of music in general. That's not an exaggeration as viewers can jump from watching Miles Davis play Europe in 67 to a punk rock show by the Toy Dolls in 04. to bluegrass musician Billy Strings playing to an empty Red Rocks Amphitheater in Colorado in September of 2020. The truth of the matter is, is anybody who's a fan is open to listening to something else. At least I believe that.
Filling my streaming queue in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. A 94-year-old member of Precinct 4 Bear County Constable's office is finally retiring. We'll hear from the man who has spent more than 70 years in local law enforcement in the next hour of GMSA. As we go to break with Trans Guide, Samuel King has been tracking this incident at I-10 and the Y near downtown. We'll have an update on the slow cleanup process. And then this one that is backing up traffic headed towards San Antonio 10 over in East Bear County. More to come. Ninety four years old and considered a pillar in the Bear County law enforcement community coming up this morning on GMSA why he's ready to hang up his hat. CBS increasing the number of stores that will administer the COVID-19 vaccine right here in Texas. It comes right before phase 1C is expected to start across the state. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 69 degrees, a little bit of drizzle and mist out there and problems on the roadway, but we're going to expect some rain possibly very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. We made it to Friday. It's March 12th. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you had a great week um, ending on a humid, misty note, I guess, at this point. But. Yeah, and uh, almost everybody here in the studio saw varying degrees of drizzle, mist, or even some rain showers. Mike is standing by with more. Uh, but starting out to be the wettest weekday morning of the week so far. Which is not drenching by any no. means, but you know, because it's been comparing to other days where it's just been a little bit of mist mm -hmm. and actually a couple of showers out there this morning. Um, you may not run into any. Ran into a couple of them coming in earlier this morning, and it's kind of murky looking once again, kind of, kind of foggy looking in places. There's those few little light showers. Uh, not much is still being picked up on radar. A few of them over by Seguin. Everything's sliding up to the north. You're going to run into some uh, wet spots over there at 10, but just kind of assume that all the roads are wet because there's a lot of mist around there too. And with the surge in humidity, humidity is just, I mean, it's going to kind of slap you in the face when you step outside this morning. The humidity is that high. A little bit of reduced visibility around Castorville and Bernie stage and then out there toward Rock Springs. Nothing too awfully thick. Shouldn't be uh, too much of an issue with that. Mold is on the moderate side. Hackberry, mulberry are both low and temperatures steady this morning. Like the past couple of mornings, wind out of the uh, southeast 10 to 20 miles per hour is going to be breezy again today. You know, the sun's going to try and squeeze through the clouds at times. It's not going to do a very good job of it. Just leaning more toward the cloudy side today and 82 for a high temperature. About the same situation tomorrow, maybe down a couple of notches. We'll have some of the morning rain. Then we have the front moving through and the better rain chance late tomorrow night into Sunday. More on that coming up. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, and boy, it has been a big mess and pictures worth a thousand words. Yeah, Mike, this is this 18 wheeler that had uh, rolled over here at the fine silver curve uh, downtown and they're still working on cleaning it up. But the good thing is here uh, is there some lanes are, are moving uh, or open. So some traffic is moving and there was a fire truck here. That fire truck uh, left just a short time ago, but still uh, the work is to get this uh, 18 wheeler upright in some form to get all of the lanes here on uh, 35 southbound to I-10 westbound open. Take a look at some travel times, uh, 17 minutes coming into downtown on 35, 25 minutes. Uh, from Bernie on I-10 coming in uh, to downtown San Antonio and 35 minutes now coming in from Seguin into downtown. Those delays continue to build because we have this situation, an earlier 18-wheeler fire causing the eastbound lanes to be closed on I-10, but there's also some big delays westbound. And our Katrina Weber, she's live at the scene this morning. And Katrina, or how are things looking now? Actually, we see some signs of improvement. We now have traffic moving in both directions uh, on the main lanes. Only one lane open, it appears, in both directions. And that is because of this wreck, uh, the situation, a wreck and a fire, in fact, in the middle of the highway. This goes back to about 4.15 this morning. I have some video to show you so you can get a better look beyond this traffic. Uh, I talked to the driver of the 18-wheeler. He said he couldn't see because it was too dark out here. He ended up driving into a construction zone area. That's where his truck got into trouble. It caught fire. He was able to get out safely, but uh, at least the cab portion of that truck did burn up. There was also uh, a spill of the fuel from the gas tank that Hazmat came out and cleaned up. But this has been the traffic situation ever since. Now, what, as we got here, there was a secondary accident involving an SUV that also crashed into that area. We don't know if anyone was hurt in that situation. But uh, as I mentioned, 
the lane on the main lanes did open up in uh, each direction, one lane, and we still have this backup of traffic now trying to catch up on the access road. So if you're going to be coming this way, you will need to be patient, but if there's any way to avoid it, it might still be a good idea to do so. I-10 near Foster Road. Reporting live in East Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says termination papers have been issued for an off-duty deputy after he was arrested yesterday. Eric Solera is facing an assault with bodily injury family violence charge. According to BCSO officials, the 25-year-old deputy has been employed with the Sheriff's Office since March of 2017. The Public Integrity Unit will be doing a criminal investigation at the same time as the BCSO Internal Affairs Administrative Investigation. Details of the assault are unknown at this time. To the pandemic now, local health officials reporting 366 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County. They also report five more people have died. Mayor Ron Nierberg says the seven day moving average now at about 186 cases per day. 240 people remain in the hospital with COVID and starting Monday, anyone in phase 1C will be able to get a vaccine here in Texas. A community health fair is happening tomorrow on the city's east side. It is hosted by Reverend James Robinson and Gospel Vision Ministries. The health fair will be Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and that will be located next to Chapman's Chicken on WW White Road near Rigsby Avenue. At the fair, you can get free COVID tests, speak directly to health experts, and get a new supply of safety items like hand sanitizers, gloves, and masks. Comal County is starting a standby list for seniors wanting to get the COVID vaccine and county officials are urging all seniors to sign up. Move comes as a state eligibility for the vaccine will add those 50 years or older to part of phase 1C uh, as part of phase 1C rather. Comal County public health officials say more than 1600 people have been vaccinated so far. CVS is expanding its COVID-19 vaccine allocation in Texas. The company is adding 74 additional pharmacies offering the vaccine to anyone who is eligible. CVS is part of the federal retail pharmacy program. 180 CVS pharmacies will now be offering that vaccine. They're expected to receive doses as early as tomorrow. We have more details on our website at KSAT.com. He served his country, his community, and now he is ready to retire. For over 70 years, Reserve Deputy Sergeant Arthur Koch has answered the call to protect others. Stephen Cavazos is live downtown with us this morning as Koch shares what he's learned over the decades. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, Mark. It's definitely, definitely the end to a very long chapter, but it has been a lifelong lessons for Reserve Deputy Sergeant Kulk, and his journey has taken him to places as far as the South Pacific, where he proudly served his country during World War II, and that commitment to service community continued right here in Bear County. Now, in 1947, he began his position with a, in law enforcement with the Precinct 4 Bear County Constable's Office, and it was during that time Kulk, that is, uh, tackled evictions, traffic patrol, issuing warrants, and other notices. Now, at the age of 94, Kalk is considered the second oldest peace officer in the entire state of Texas. Kalk says he has seen his community grow over the years, and soon he will be hanging up his hat for retirement. Kalk says the job always wasn't easy, wasn't always easy, that is, but one valuable lesson he shares is how to communicate with people during those tough times. If I can talk to somebody and change the situation, that's the thing to do. Over the years, he did serve under different constables, and right now he is serving under Constable Catherine Brown, who stepped into that role at the start of this year. Now, in a post on her Facebook page, she did credit Kulk as one of the pillars in the Bear County law enforcement community, but not just that, his experience unparalleled. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Spurts. Spurs Sports and Entertainment is looking to hire 75 part-time positions for the remainder of the season. The organization is holding a job fair on Monday from 10 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon at the AT&T Center. They are looking to hire ushers, greeters, ticket takers, elevator operators, and event security. You can find a link to apply in advance on KSET.com or text FAMILY to 97211. If you attend the job fair, you must wear a mask. In your morning consumer headline, General Motors has struck a deal with a lithium, lithium battery startup to help power its shift into electric vehicles. The joint development agreement with Massachusetts-based Solid Energy Solutions could help cut down the weight of batteries as well as the cost. GM is looking at end sales of many of its gas and diesel-powered lines by the year 2035. 
early electric car leader Tesla is now dealing with a whole lot of new competition. Along with GM, Ford has launched its Mustang Mach-E, which according to market data is eating into Tesla's market share. In Europe, a car from Volkswagen is now the top electric model sold. Heads up, folks. Netflix cracking down on password sharing. Some users are being blocked at the login screen and being told they need to be in the same house as the account owner. <laughs> Netflix says the new security measure is only being tested on some users for now. Google Maps is making it easier for you to report new and missing roads instead of just dropping a pin. Users can now draw the changes directly onto the map, whether it's renaming a street or changing the direction of traffic. Google will vet all submissions before they are published. 10 minutes past the hour, 69 degrees. Healthcare industry has changed in many ways because of the coronavirus. Later on GMSA, we'll see how it led to the advancement of remote care. As usual, birds will be migrating through South Texas this spring, but they may have more trouble this year compared to last because of last month's winter storms. After the break, we'll see how you might be able to help the birds on their journey. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's been humid and misty and a little bit of showers here and there, but uh, we are expecting a bigger rain event tomorrow. We'll go check in with Mike in a minute. Good morning. Welcome back. It's 614. We are still seeing the impacts of February's winter freeze across the state. Biologists are concerned for what this means for the bird population, especially migrating birds and hummingbirds. Sarah Costa spoke with a bird biologist about those impacts and how you can help. You know, you're not going to see a blooming plant for this county or the next county or the next county over. We've seen the aftermath that winter storm Yuri did to South Texas plants. And even though most plants will eventually come back, bird biologist Jeff Brown, who lives in Corpus Christi, says he is concerned that local and migrating birds and hummingbirds flying through Texas this month will not have enough food. All the lantanas, all, all the hummingbird type plants, I have trumpet vine and clay macanthus and all these great little plants that feed the hummingbirds around these houses that I help to maintain. And all of them are having to be cut to the ground. South Texas is a hot spot for bird migration, especially the Rio Grande Valley and Corpus Christi. But those migrating birds and hummingbirds also stop in San Antonio and other parts of Texas as well. If you were traveling from the valley to Dallas, you're going to need a spot to clean a uh, place to gas up. You're going to need a store to go and get something to eat or gasoline. And so same things with these little hummingbirds and the migrating birds. They need some place to gas up and uh, there's no flowers to be found. Brown says this impact is important. Even if you aren't a bird or nature enthusiast, irregularity to the bird food supply can have a domino effect on our local ecosystems to our local economy. For example, Brown says the birding industry is a multi-million dollar industry where people from across the globe travel to South Texas during the migration seasons. They flock down here to be able to see the birds that we have to offer here in Texas. So it is for the industry, it is for businesses, it is for the restaurants and the hotel business. So caring about nature, you're caring about jobs. But you can do your part by putting out a bird feeder this month and a hummingbird feeder. Now Brown says if you put out a hummingbird feeder, make sure you clean it every two to three days. You can either buy that nectar at a store or you can make it on your own with four cups of water, one cup of sugar. And he says if you make it at home, do not include dye. It's, it's anything anybody can do, you as the public, uh, you know, little steps, but if everyone does a little, it's going to help a lot. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Now 616. And no winter storm here today, thank goodness, but a little bit of drizzle on the roadways causing some problems, Samuel. Yeah, Stephanie, Mark, it doesn't take much uh, on the roads to get some slick conditions, and we're definitely seeing that uh, this morning. Uh, this is the view from uh, I-10 at 410 looking east uh, at the situation we've had out here that Katrina Weber has been out at. This the 18-wheeler fire. There's also a crash there in the construction zone, so that's causing some tie-ups. Here's a look at that uh, on the maps here. Uh, so traffic down to 9 miles per hour approaching this. Katrina tells us that at least one of the main lanes 
uh, on eastbound has uh, reopened and the westbound lanes, at least one of those lanes has reopened. So that's not necessarily being reflected on here. Uh, so that is some good news, but you can still see some major issues on the east side uh, this morning. Also had this 18 wheeler rollover. Just looking at the view over there on the Transguide uh, array I have, and you can definitely see the 18 wheeler still on its side. The good thing is uh, some traffic is still getting by this morning. And Mike, the time changed this weekend, so people need to remember to make sure their headlights are in order and it's going to be darker earlier in the morning. Yep, and uh, make sure you uh, change the batteries in your uh, smoke alarm as well in your uh, carbon monoxide detector. All right, blue bonnets. We're starting to see a few of them showing up out there. And a few more are going to be uh, popping up as time rolls on. Speaking of that time change, yeah, the uh, sunrise tomorrow morning, 645 Sunday morning, about quarter of eight. And then, of course, sunset Sunday evening won't be until about quarter of eight in the evening. And, of course, those two numbers are getting a lot closer. That's because we have eight days to go until uh, spring. The vernal equinox is going to be a week from Saturday. It's uh, early in the morning, I think about 4, 430 in the morning or so when the Sun is directly over the equator and then it starts working its way into the northern hemisphere. OK, here's what the uh, what it looks like outside right now. It's uh, well, about the same picture we've had every other morning this week, and we do have a few showers. Actually, a couple of decent uh, showers are now forming up just to the north of San Marcos, kind of sliding up there to the north. We had a few in and around town this morning. Not a lot, maybe over there by uh, 1604 and 35 on the northeast side right now. Maybe some mist and drizzle as well, so things are, are definitely damp out there. So yesterday, we only crept up to 79 degrees. Uh, we had a few extra clouds kind of hanging around here. Tried to get a break in the clouds in the morning, a little bit of sunshine, but the clouds really held in there tough. But we did hit 90 in Catula, Laredo 91 yesterday, and then today it's going to be about same situation. We'll be up in the low 80s, some uh, upper 80s and low 90s down to the uh, southwest, and that's banking on, you know, a little peak of or a thin spot in the clouds here and there today. Now, as far as rain, we'll keep rain around this morning. Just basically cloudy skies, a couple of peaks of sunshine later on this afternoon, and that'll be the uh, situation tomorrow. Some rain in the morning, and we'll probably stay just cloudy all day long, so that may hold temperatures down ever so slightly. Then by the evening hours, there comes that uh, front moving in here from the northwest, and that's going to touch off showers, a couple of thunderstorms, and they will continue to work their way across here in the overnight hours early on Sunday morning. And it's going to be maybe some decent rain here and there, which is going to be encouraging on Sunday. But by late morning and then noontime, most of that will continue to work its way off to the east. We'll start to see some clearing move on in here during the afternoon hours on Sunday. Also, as those storms develop Saturday night, some could be on the stronger side, potentially severe with high winds and hail. Just a very marginal chance for that, but something to uh, keep in mind, and that's going to be late uh, tomorrow night into the wee hours of Sunday morning way out there to the west. So today, 77 at noon, mostly cloudy, breezy once again, kind of like every other day this week, 82 high temperature, 10 degrees above normal. Tomorrow we start off with more uh, showers around here, and then we'll have more moving in here later on tomorrow night. Showers, thunderstorms, and look at the difference in temperatures. Then Sunday morning is that front's moving on through here down to 55, 74 on Sunday. Much drier air, much more comfortable in the afternoon, and kind of actually coolish again by Monday morning. Looks like a cold Monday morning compared oh. to this week. Well, yeah, compared yeah. to this week, it's going to be 20 degrees lower Monday wow. morning. We'll get ready for that. Thank you, Mike. 621, about 69 degrees. It has been one year since the pandemic was declared a global pandemic. After the break, we're going to see how the healthcare industry has adapted. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Find your rhythm, your happy place. Find your breaking point, then break it. Every emergency gives you a potent blend of nutrients so you can emerge your best with emergency. So you wanna make the best burger ever? Then make it. That means cooking day and night until you get, you got paid. That means best burger ever. Intuit QuickBooks helps small businesses be more successful with payments, payroll, banking, and live bookkeeping. I live the lie, love is the crime.
you I believe in No need to blame myself, no need to die I'm only human Don't hesitate Time heals the pain You ain't the problem Welcome back. 624. We've learned a lot about how to do things at arm's length over the past year, and medicine is no exception, even when treating COVID-19 itself. Doctors have been struggling with the best way to treat patients showing COVID symptoms, but who don't require hospitalization. Ursula Perry shows us how some hospitals are perfecting the full cervix COVID clinic at home. This is Michael Aretta's new normal. He's one of millions of Americans whose life has drastically been changed by COVID-19. Everybody in the apartment had it. Uh, everybody got over it, except for me. I'm what you call a long hauler. Michael became sick in August. Shortly afterward, he was hospitalized and intubated. It was very traumatic. Fortunately, his condition improved, but that meant he faced recovery from a deadly disease in his own home. They are infectious uh, and can't go to their home clinics for care. We just didn't have a way of caring for these patients who were not in the hospital. We follow the patients through the acute infection phase. One person on the team was taking care of my medication. One person was taking care of me physically. Another person would be taking care of me mentally. We're following their oxygen saturation level. We're following their temperature. We're following their symptoms. It kept me busy. You know, I was always either on the phone or somebody was at my door. Michael is now steadily getting better and feeling stronger. These COVID-19 comprehensive care clinics are opening up all over the country out of necessity because patients do need help after they leave the hospital, sometimes for years to come. University Health has also set up its own clinic system for this reason. Most of the patients are inpatient or through telemedicine getting the care they need. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Ursula Perry. And time now is 626 and about 69 degrees right now. It is game day for our Spurs and fans will be back inside the AT&T Center. We'll have the new rules you need to follow if you're heading out to support our team tonight. Go Spurs go and taking a look outside with Trans Guy. There's the problem we've seen all morning at I-10 at the Y uh, overturned vehicle there. We're going to check in with Samuel after the break. When can we expect those $1,400 stimulus checks coming up this morning on GMSA? Why you should be keeping a close eye on your bank accounts. President Biden saying we could declare our independence from this virus on July 4th. I'm Alex Pache in Washington. Coming up, his plans to vaccinate the country. Outside with live cam, if you're just now joining us, the roads are wet in some spots. We've had some overnight showers. And Mike says there is still a chance of storms this weekend. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is Friday, March 12th. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining us today. The wet roads have caused some problems. We're going to stand by and get an update from Samuel King. But right now, Mike is up with a look at our weekend forecast. Good morning, sir. Good morning, boy. When you step outside this morning, you are going to definitely notice the humidity. It is up there. Dew points. We haven't seen them that high in a long time. Up in the mid 60s. Uh, temperature right now is 69 degrees. Wind out of the southeast at 13 miles per hour. There's a lot of mist around the area as well as a few uh, scattered showers. Some there just north of uh, New Braunfels, heading up in toward uh, San Marcos, maybe in and around the, uh, the Canyon Lake area. And that's, uh, as, that's it as far as what's being detected on radar. Now, again, I'm, there may be some too light out there, uh, just in the form of some mist that's uh, too light for radar. I ran into a couple of showers earlier this morning. Like I said, much of it is moving on out. A little bit of uh, reduced visibility, Bernie Stage, Casterville, and then out toward Rock Springs, but nothing too thick this morning. Um, except for the humidity being so thick. Molds on the moderate side, Hackberry, Mulberry are both low. And throughout the morning, a couple of scattered showers, some mist out there, damp roads. And then this afternoon, mostly cloudy again, low 80s, breezy again, kind of the same as we've been seeing all week long. Tomorrow, light showers in the morning. And then we'll keep the clouds around throughout the day, right around upper 70s or 80. And then tomorrow night is when we have the chance for some showers and thunderstorms. Those will extend on into Sunday morning. Most of that's going to be moving on out by about noon, maybe some leftover showers off to the east. And then we are going to have some windy conditions. It's going to be clearing out and much lower humidity coming in for Sunday afternoon. More on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, as we were talking about Samuel King and uh, Boy, that's been there all morning, right? Yes, it has, uh, Mike. You know, we were just 
talking before we started here, uh, me and Mike, about the uh, what they have to do here to maybe get this thing upright. Uh, this 18 wheeler, this is a near to fine silver curve uh, where 35 meets uh, I 10. It looked like they're having to unload uh, this before they can uh, get it upright there. So it's still causing uh, some delay. Some traffic have been moving here on, on this side. We haven't seen many uh, vehicles uh, lately, so I'm not sure if that is still closed at uh, th this point. Uh, but again, this is downtown near to fine silver curve. This has been going on for several hours all morning since we've uh, been on the air at least. So that's something to watch out for if you're coming uh, downtown. Here's a look at some travel times from across the uh, area. 24 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie, 26 minutes from New Braunfels. But the big one here, 44 minutes now on I-10 from Seguin. And that's because we had an earlier situation out here. An 18 wheeler uh, caught fire. There's also a crash here at I-10 eastbound at Foster Road. At least uh, several lanes were closed earlier, but this also causing some uh, delays westbound. Our Katrina Weber out there on the scene this morning. And Katrina, we understand that uh, there's some traffic moving out there, but it's still a mess. Yeah, it's a still slow going on the main lanes of the highway, but at least it is going. We have a, a lane open, it looks like, in each direction here around this accident. Uh, this has been going on since 4.15 this morning. It was an 18-wheeler that somehow got into the construction zone, which is between the east and westbound lanes. It crashed and caught fire. The driver got out safely, uh, but this has been the situation ever since. I want to give you a look at the video so you can get a closer look at how that truck burned. The cab of it completely disintegrated. Uh, the the uh, trailer was carrying, we understand, rebar, and that spilled across the highway. There also was a spill of gasoline, which hazmat cleaned up earlier. But traffic still affected by this situation. Uh, it looks like the, the outside lanes of the main lanes are open. The access road has also been used for traffic. Uh, but this is going to be the situation for at least some time to come, even though we've had some King Kong wreckers on scene. I don't see any sign of them yet hooking up uh, this wreck to, to haul it away. So for now, the inside lanes of both directions are affected I-10 near Foster Road. Reporting live in East Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Last night, President Joe Biden marked a somber moment. One year since the coronavirus outbreak was outbreak rather was declared a global pandemic. It was his first primetime address as president of the United States. President Biden noted the toll that the pandemic took on everyone, but also outlined his plan to return to a more normal lifestyle. ABC's Alex Perche has more. Good morning. Yes, we've been searching for an end to the national nightmare that is COVID-19. So this is certainly good news, but Biden's timeline is dependent on vaccinations and he's laying out his goals for those as well. Finding light in the darkness is a very American thing to do. In his first primetime address, President Joe Biden outlining his plan for a return to normal, directing states to make all American adults eligible for a vaccine by May 1st. The president telling Americans if they do their part, there's a chance that we can gather safely in small groups by July 4th. Where we not only mark our independence as a nation, but we begin to mark our independence from this virus. The White House announcing the military will have a total of 6,000 troops backing vaccination programs and that the number of community health centers and pharmacies giving out vaccines will dramatically expand. The president's address coming on the same day Biden signed one of the largest economic rescue packages in our nation's history. Well, this historic legislation is about rebuilding the backbone of this country. The new law will give most Americans $1,400 checks. Those checks could start hitting as soon as this weekend. It's Biden's first major legislative achievement, passing without a single Republican vote, even though a Pew poll shows that 70 percent of Americans support it. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. And as you just heard, those stimulus checks could be in your bank account this weekend, but there may be questions on who is getting them. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown this morning with the latest on this move to get people back on their feet. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, Stephanie. That's what it's all about. Now, this is all part of that $1.9 trillion relief package, which aims to help Americans recover 
from the setbacks they face because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, here's what you need to know at home. Now, the stimulus checks will be per individual and dependent single filers who earn up to $75,000 and with head of household earnings up to $112,500 will be eligible to receive the $1,400 checks. Married couples who earn up to $150,000 are also able to receive $2,800. Now, those taxpayers will also receive $1,400 for each dependent. Now, you must also have a Social Security to be eligible to receive those payments. Now, in addition to those stimulus checks that could be expected to hit our bank accounts soon, the relief package aims to also extend $300 weekly in unemployment emergency benefits, and that's going to be going on through early September. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. And remember, you can join us on March 16th for KSET's second Parenting in a Pandemic live stream special. You can watch it online or on our mobile news app or our free streaming app that works with Roku and other smart TV devices. Yeah, that's Tuesday afternoon. Myra Arthur will host and she'll be joined by a panel of professionals who are also parents to tackle some important issues like mental health and addiction to technology. You can also submit any questions you have right now at KSAT.com. In your morning headlines, Harris County is suing TxDOT over an Interstate 45 expansion project in Houston. Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo held a news conference and said TxDOT did not consider community input or environmental impacts. Great. Hidalgo says the transportation policy is outdated and does not address the real concerns of a growing city. Last month's winter storm killed nearly 4 million fish on the Texas coast. Officials with Texas Parks and Wildlife are calling it the largest fish kill event since the 1980s. According to the department, the upper and lower Laguna Madre bays off the South Texas coast were hit the hardest. Boeing 737 MAX jets are back up in the air for Dallas-based Southwest Airlines. The planes returned to service yesterday with 44 daily flights to 15 U.S. destinations. By mid-April, the company says the jet will resume operation throughout its entire network. American Airlines and United have already resumed their MAX flights. Southwest has more of the jets than any other airline with more deliveries from Boeing on the way. It is game day for our Spurs. For the first time in a year, fans will be allowed back inside the AT&T Center. Our RJ Marquez tells us what you need to know before heading out to tonight's game. The Spurs have several things planned for fans tonight as they return to the arena for the first time since the pandemic started. The last time fans were in the house was March 10th of last year, so the Spurs wanted to host a welcome back party with safety in mind, of course. The Spurs are limiting capacity to 3,200 fans and there will be social distancing measures in place and fans are required to wear a mask except when they are eating or drinking. Here's some of the fun stuff taking place tonight. First of all, it will be an official fiesta night, so the court will be fiesta themed and the team is wearing their fiesta uniforms. Guests at the game will also be given two Spurs family fiesta shirts for you and a friend or family member. And pop singer Ellie Brooke, who is a San Antonio native, will sing the national anthem. The Coyote will be in the house doing his Coyote craziness and the Spurs hype squad will hand out gifts to random fans. Now before you head out, make sure to complete a mobile health screening using the Clear app which is free to download. Temperatures will also be checked at the door. And remember, everything is cashless now, so download the Spurs app and you can use that to pay for parking, to make food and drink purchases, and you can go pick up that food or drink when it's ready to go, so no waiting in line. KSAT Sports Director Greg Simmons got a sneak peek of the new safety changes at the AT&T Center. Check out that video and more information for fans on KSAT.com. Have fun and be safe out there as the Spurs make a run for the playoffs with fans in the stands. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, RJ. All right, tip off for tonight's game, Magic at Spurs, 8 p.m. The Magic are 13 and 24 on the season. Spurs are 18 and 15. You can watch it live on Fox Sports Southwest or catch highlights tomorrow morning right here on GMSA. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. And time now is 641 and 69 degrees for now. So a recent experiment on KAE Science Lab taught us the phases of the moon with Oreos. After the break, we're going to see how one young scientist extraordinaire tested it out. I'll get her go. Six forty-five on your Friday morning. Welcome back to GMSA. Last week we had another great Katie Science Lab, and this one may be our all-time fan favorite because you actually could eat this experiment when you're done. Our Katie Blake taught us about the different phases of the moon using Oreo cookies, and my daughter Rooney was already learning a little bit about this in school, so she also tried it out. 
Hi Katie, I saw your video. Can't wait to do the faces of the moon. You know what the best part is? I get to eat Oreos. Oreos, 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 uh, 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 Oreos. I love Oreos. I think I ate some. Sorry. Did I eat some? Yes, I did. <laughs> so she actually will have the phases of the moon <laughs> on GMSA at nine today. We, you know, we have the little poster board and everything, but this is the beginning of it. Yes. <laughs> She's such a little ham. I can't uh, wait to see more today on ham. GMSA at nine. Yeah, that's coming up. But for now, let's go ahead and check back with <laughs> Samuel King. We've had a lot of problems on the road this yes, morning. Yes, and I've been saying, Stephanie, we need to see Rooney more. Oh. He steals the spotlight. She'll come around. She's on, every time she's on the show. Uh, but here we is, speaking of spotlight, we've been talking about this all morning long. There's an 18 uh, wheeler that ended up on its side. Uh, definitely uh, the trailer in the back here at uh, near to fine silver curve at the Y. It appears that it's been completely closed down again as they're trying to figure out how to get that trailer upright. And you can see the crew out there unloading uh, some of the items in there. Can't quite tell uh, what was inside there, but uh, that's, I guess, a sign of progress, but it does take a while to get this sort of thing cleared up. So this is gonna be a big delay and a big problem here as we move into the morning. You can see the delays downtown already down to 27 miles per hour uh, approaching uh, that interchange there. Remember, I-35 southbound, I-10 westbound uh, ramp appears to be closed once again. Also have a big situation out here on the east side. Katrina Weber's been out out there all morning. Uh, we had a vehicle fire I-10 eastbound at Foster Road uh, that is causing some slowdowns on both sides of the interstate. So let's take a look here, uh, particularly pay attention to this westbound time just to get from 1604 to 410, 20 minutes right now. And before I let you go, remember daylight saving time this weekend. Check your headlights and Monday morning students returning to school. Many of them watch out in the school zones because it's going to be dark and the students are heading to school, guys. Mike Ostrange has a rare site here in San Antonio. Yes. A lot of times, you know, even at the airports, because mm -hmm. we have some maintenance facilities over there, right. and you see planes from all over. And look at this, down there at Kelly, somebody got a picture of the uh, New England Patriots team plane, 767, looks like, with all the, uh, like the, the tail markings on there. Uh, all the trophies. Uh -huh. Kind of, kind of cool that. design. So anyway, thank you very much. Yeah, send me a picture of an airplane and it'll definitely make it on TV. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. And notice how, yeah, visibility is okay in town. We've still got all that haze and all the low clouds out there. A few showers up in portions of Kamal County right now. Everything's sliding up to the north and uh, that's about it as far as detectable rain. Some mist is out there. Roads are on the damp side because we had a few more of these showers that moved through earlier this morning and things really haven't had a chance to dry out all that much. 69 here in town, mid 60s in the hill country, even 70 there, Port S.A. and Castroville, 71, 70 in Hondo. Humidity, so when you look at the scale, you get above 60 and that's when you start to feel it. And we're in the mid and even upper 60s in some places. So yes, you will definitely it's going to wake you up when you walk outside and get all that humidity. Wind is out of the southeast at about 10, 15 miles per hour, so a decent breeze. We've got a couple of wind gusts out there, as a matter of fact. It's gusting to 21 out at the airport. It is going to be breezy throughout the rest of today. So we are going to have a lot of clouds hanging around here today. Tomorrow morning, more showers are going to be uh, around the area. And then throughout the afternoon, just keeping clouds around, maybe a couple of showers here and there, but also notice by late afternoon evening, a few of those showers are going to be developing out there to the west. And then here comes the front, which is going to move through in the overnight hours into early Sunday morning showers, even a couple of thunderstorms. And this model really has things moving down through here quickly, getting on out by even late morning. Most of the rain ending starting to clear out beautiful afternoon on Sunday afternoon, much drier air. It is going to be windy and so the dry air is then going to allow temperatures to drop down actually a little below normal into the uh, upper 40s by Monday morning and going into the middle part of next week. Then we will have another chance for a couple of showers. Another front's going to move through here then Wednesday, Tuesday night, early morning on Wednesday forecast today. Like just about every other day this week, we're going to have breezy conditions, mostly cloudy skies, 77 at noon, and then we'll top off 10 degrees above normal up to 82 tomorrow morning. More of these scattered showers around the area and then just basically cloudy skies throughout the day. We'll stay in the upper 70s tomorrow. Then tomorrow night is when we have the chance for showers and thunderstorms. 
and uh, that front moves on through and then clear out. And I think we salvage the latter portion of the day on Sunday. So. Uh I always remember to change the clocks on the stove, microwave, in the house, in the cars. The car is a big I win. always forget the wristwatches, and so I'm always like, oh, man. It, it, it throws you off for a second, I'm it does. sure. Yeah. It does. But, but a good reminder. I'll take care. I'll write myself a at note. At least yeah. the alarm clocks on phones, they change on their own. Change. Yes. Wrist That's watch. a big help. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness. Right now, it is 650, 69 degrees. And speaking of that time change, the clock is ticking, and we are about to lose that hour. Tomorrow on GMSA, how to dodge the daylight saving time drowsiness. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up, and another look at traffic with our expert, Samuel King. Welcome back everyone. Six till the top of the hour. Still have this situation downtown I-10 at the Y in the fine silver curve. The crews are working to clear that trailer that had it overturned and they're trying to unload it so they can get it upright and get it out of the way. And this is a traffic delay that is causing uh, major delays uh, downtown. Uh, this is the view from I-10 at Frio, so you're going to have to watch out for that today. Also still have this situation out uh, east of 410. Had an 18-wheeler catch fire earlier this morning in a crash. Our Katrina Weber has been out there all morning. And Katrina, what's the latest? Well, we can see some of the cleanup work really starting to move ahead. We have a crew here now uh, picking up the pieces of the truck. You can also get a better look in, in the daylight at the situation. What's left of that 18 wheeler that burned here on the highway. The driver told me he couldn't see. He accidentally went into the construction zone and his truck uh, caught fire. He's fine. It was a secondary accident. We haven't heard about injuries on that, but traffic now moving in each direction and in at least one lane until they get that mess cleared up. Reporting live in East Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina will keep us updated all morning long with uh, any updates on that. And uh, as you can see outside right now, we got lots of clouds hanging around here and a couple of uh, sprinkly showers around the area. A lot of mist and drizzle. The roads are damp, so do take it easy as you uh, head on out this morning. 68 right now, very warm, very, very humid. 77 at noon, 82 for a high temperature, kind of breezy. And then we have those uh, showers tomorrow morning. Showers, thunderstorms overnight into Sunday, and then we'll clear out Sunday afternoon. And of course, set your clocks ahead. We will remember. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Thanks for making us part of your Friday morning. Yeah, happy Friday. Have a great weekend, but we'll see you back here at 9. Good Morning America is coming up next right here on KSAT 12.